Hi, my name is Sam Haynes and welcome to History 3363. In this brief introduction I'd like to pose a, a very simple question. That is, uh, why do we study Texas history? Why do we study the history of any state? I should probably mention at the outset that I don't really buy into this idea of Texas exceptionalism. And that's just a fancy way of saying that Texas is bigger and better than any other state. The fact is that the history of Texas has been romanticized and mythologized over the years. And it's our job uh, during the course of the next several weeks to cut through those myths and to look at the state's past in a more balanced and objective way. Now, there is a popular interpretation of Texas history which you already, may already be familiar with. Uh, it's one that celebrates the exploits of Anglo males uh, like Davy Crockett, Sam Houston, for example. And later on in this course, we'll be uh, looking at that interpretation and um, looking at how it emerges and why it becomes dominant, uh, what it gets right, what it gets wrong. But today, I want to make the case that Texas history really is unique and that it is remarkable, but for reasons that the popular interpretation uh, never mentions. It's important to think of Texas as a place of convergence, as a place where peoples from all over the continent um, meet and sometimes collide. Uh, we'll be talking about Native Americans uh, who are uh, the indigenous peoples of Texas, but there are other Native Americans who arrive later. Um, in the 18th century, uh, tribes from the southern plains migrate into Texas, the Apaches and the Comanches. In the early 19th century, the Cherokees and the Choctaw uh, and other tribes migrate into Texas from the southeastern United States. In this course we'll be talking about Spaniards, uh, Mexicans, Anglo-Americans, uh, African-Americans who were brought into Texas as slaves. We'll be talking about Europeans uh, because by the mid-19th century Texas has a sizable uh, population of settlers from, uh, from Central Europe really isn't any other state in the Union that can boast this kind of ethnic diversity. And this interaction uh, sometimes uh, occurs uh, or takes place cooperatively. Sometimes it leads to uh, conflict and, and bloodshed. And I think the history of Texas is significant for another uh, reason, in a, in a continental sense. It's important to remember that uh, in the, it's in the history of Texas that the uh, that, uh, the fates of Mexico and the United States um, collide. Uh, the Texas Revolution is a Mexican story, but it's a story in which the United States becomes very much involved. And in fact, um, ten years after the Revolution, it will lead to a war between the United States and Mexico. And that's uh, the largest war ever fought between two uh, nations in the Western Hemisphere. So for both of these reasons, I think, for both in terms of, it, of its ethnic diversity, uh, and in terms of its significance in a continental uh, framework, the history of Texas demands our attention, uh, not just for us as Texans, but as Americans and as uh, citizens of a larger world. So over the next several weeks, I'll be visiting uh, several historic sites, and I'll be taking Ripley with me. Um, I'm sorry, I should have introduced Ripley earlier. Um, Ripley doesn't know any tricks, but she uh, does like Texas history. And so we'll be taking some film of these sites and we'll be using them to introduce uh, the PowerPoint lectures. So thanks very much and I hope you enjoy it.